Okay, the unit has gone into the next step, and right now it's, it performed a purge. That's the first thing it's doing, so it's drawing the air sample in to zero out the unit. And um, and you hear, you'll know it's on because it's going to start beeping. And I'm getting a thing. It did come up with the press check, which again, it's not a check button. It just means it's pressure checking. And what it did through that warm-up cycle is it temperature stabilized the unit. And um, I have found in my, with this particular unit, sometimes I get a little drift on it where I'll get a 1 ppm leak when, uh, when I really don't have one. Um, I haven't seen it on other units, but in my particular unit it does. And there are ways that, that um, at the factory they can adjust the voltages and things to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I actually did do go through that process. So if you have that problem, let me know. Um, what I'm going to do here is, um, again, I'm going to show you it's at this point it's not about this stuff it's about well what is in the um, how do I how do I get in here and uh, let's say for instance right now I've got it set up for changing for checking 404A what if I want to try a different refrigerant I press these two buttons together and it brings me into the main menu and I use the down arrow to go to the refrigerant uh, go through the different things that this does this particular one is gas type. I press enter and it says select gas type. I use my other arrows to go through. There's 407A, C. Some of these are in order and some aren't, so you might have to cycle through the whole thing um, to see if your refrigerant is in there, if it's kind of an odd one. The other thing is, is that uh, this is an upgradable unit so there are going to be new refrigerants and over time we can add those in there uh, if you have a field rep they can do that or uh, you can send it back to the factory in Pittsburgh so I'm trying to look for R22 here and there's an interesting one we have that 1234YF which is one of the new low GWP gases it's already in there it's pretty cool so R11, R12, there it is R22 I found it I press enter and then it goes back out to that thing and I press escape boom you notice the pump stopped running because right now it's going to run through another purge test to zero out that that filter or zero out the bench and uh, now I'm back to zero ppm now another interesting thing or, or thing to keep in mind is that let's say you have this on 22 but you have a 404A rack next to it what if the 404A rack is leaking? Will I find it with, will I have it on set on 22? And the answer is yes. It, it, it will actually catch any of the halogenated refrigerants. The difference is, is when you set it to this specific refrigerant, it's going to give you the exact PPM reading down to 1 PPM. So if you had it on 22 and, and you had a 10 PPM leak, let's say, maybe it wouldn't read 10, maybe it read 12 or 8, you know. So it's, but it's still going to read it. Also, this thing is not designed to find ammonia or CO2 or some of the other gases. There are, we actually do make PAGMs that, that will work with CO2 specifically, uh, but that doesn't have the chlorine in it or the, the halogen in it, so we don't do that. So another thing that might happen is that, let's say you're getting these these leaks, one, two, three, four, ten, and you know, you're, but you're just not sure go into the unit again, press those two arrows and then press escape out again, it's going to run through a purge cycle again and um, wh uh, what it's going to do when it, when it purges it's going to zero it out again so another thing is, is you'll see there's a fault light here, how does that go on? if I cover this thing you'll see that it faults up and when I clear it, it goes away. And inside the um, inside the uh, menu, you can actually go look at the, and it will give you a report of the um, the different uh, faults and what what happened. So you'll get different faults. Ones for the filter being blocked up. Uh, this this filter will occasionally need to be replaced, and that will show up as a fault. You'll get uh, blockage faults. Um, and, and so that sort of thing. So that, that can be found inside the menu. Now your, your unit came with a document that will give you all the fault all the fault codes and if you need another one you can get that from Backrack as a PDF 
I'll, I'll put one on my website. Uh, that does change because they, they do update the units. But uh, So I've shown you those things. I've shown you how to run a purge. And um, you're pretty much ready to go out and get started. So we suggest that you walk through the store. Um, if you're walking through uh, the main part of the store, what you'll find is um, if you have a big leak and you walk in the front door, you may get a 1 or 2 ppm leak right in the front of the store. That doesn't mean it's a small leak. That means it could be a huge leak because it's reading 1 ppm mixed with all the air in the whole store. So as you walk down, what this will do is your, your ppm levels will, will go up as you get closer to the leak. So if I'm looking at a, a lineup of, of doors, I'll start at the one end, I'll drop it into the grate on, on the bottom there, and if I'm getting a reading, it could be a reading all the way from the end of the lineup, but it's just mixing with the air. And you'll walk through and you'll just see where it goes up and up and up. And of course, um, you'll know where the valves are and the things like that, so you, you can kind of say, well, I know the valve's up in the right corner. You can go up and, uh, and find that. But um, it will find leaks down to 1 ppm. I find that if I get a hit of 1 ppm, it could just be the sensor drifting. More likely, you know, over the longer you use this and the more it warms up, the less drift you, you're going to get. But um, what, uh, what I do find is if you start getting a leak, a ppm level over, let's say, 3, 4, 5, there's a leak somewhere and you got to find it. You may want to go look. A lot of times it can be wafting out from behind a case or under a case you just gotta think alright if I'm refrigerant I'm leaking and there's a you know up here there's a, an air return that's gonna affect things or I have shoppers walking through and they're wafting the refrigerant around if you get a, a hit on there there's a leak somewhere overhead pipes a lot of times you could you know have the pipe uh, up top and it's you get the leak down at the bottom you have to go up and see say well that makes sense it's coming from up there look for oil stains things like that and I guarantee you, you use this unit and you do it on a regular basis you will lower your leak rates it is by far the best unit out there next thing I'm going to do I'm going to turn it off go back to this uh, this button here and simply press off all the noise goes away I still have the power on on the battery however let's say I'm going to put this away for the night or whatever I just go and I Quick, click that. That light will go out, and I'm set up for the next day. Just remember to turn that thing back on. Thank you for listening.